Hi, Dr. Karen Can here. Welcome to another edition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. And this week, it's all about change. There's a book title by Neil Donna Walsh called When Everything Changes, Change Everything. And it is the perfect manual <laughs> for us to navigate our future. Um, right now, millions and billions probably of us are resisting change. And I get it. Um, certain things that I see going on in the world, uh, people arguing, wars, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, I tend to have a resistance to that because I don't want that to be there. But yet that resistance I know is kind of like sludge and friction towards manifesting the future that I desire, which is one that is healthy and harmonious and all of humanity is working together for positive change. So change is going to happen whether we like it or not. And I'd love to um, continue working on loving what is. And that's, that's another book by Byron Katie. Really love her work as well. So loving what is. So what is, is whatever's manifested in this moment. It doesn't mean that it has to continue this way. Our presence, our vibration dictates in the quantum, like seeds the quantum as to what it is we see in the future. So we each have a responsibility to, um, you know, basically uh, call forth the reality we do want. But in the meantime, how do we adapt? How do we change? Um, if, if one can accept that change is inevitable, and maybe change seems a lot faster these days <laughs> than what we're used to, then that can really help. So I'm going to break this down and uh, show you a little diagram that I made. Okay, so um, change. Well, we're going to be talking about uh, four concepts today. Humanity, progressivity, harmony, and flexibility. So let's start with humanity. Guess what? Um, as organisms evolve, at least the theory is that uh, we go from these single cell organisms to multi-cell organisms. And then if you think about each of our cells as an individual organism, isn't it amazing how they all work together or for most of us work together, right? Well, guess what? Apparently, as individuated humans, all of humanity is an organism. All of humanity is like a bigger organism. Now, right now, it may not be harmonious. Maybe there's cancers in certain parts of all of humanity, you know, things that are out of balance and, and, and um, you know, not vibrating properly or resonating properly. However, us individuated people have a relationship with the greater whole. And this is something that um, with, with regards to change, that these relationships can shift. And we want to just, uh, you know, be conscious about how healthy they are. So, the three things that you can do if you happen to divine muscle test is you can actually check how healthy, balanced, and harmonious are your relationships mentally, emotionally, and energetically with humanity. Now, energetically, because we have an energy body and all of humanity has an energy body. So it's like its own organism. So we can actually check how balanced that relationship is. And, and that could be good to check from time to time because of these massive changes going on. What about progressivity? Um, I don't know about you. I'd be really interested to know. So please comment below if this has been you too. But I've really been inspired to um, have new habits, you know, since the whole pandemic and staying at home more and things like that. Um, I, even though I love structure and I love schedules and things like that, but th there are new habits that I seem to want to do. And I don't know about you, but it seems like um, these wellness habits, for example, um, whether that be daily meditation or, you know, reading nonfiction books, uh, you know, like self-help or, you know, uh, um, consciousness books, things like that, um, or eating differently. I've been playing around with this. So what have I been doing lately? I'm not saying you should do it or not. You have to use your own discernment. But what I have been testing, muscle testing lately, is that my body would really like me to do a bone broth fast until about, depends on the day, but uh, between 1, 3, and 5. So some days it's 5 p.m. until I eat something solid, meaning my, either my smoothie and dinner, um, or sometimes it's 3 p.m., sometimes it's 1 p.m., depending on whatever energies are there. And um, I don't judge it. I just go, oh, well, let me try that out, see if it works. And so far it has been working. I have not felt um, hungry 
before that. Now, of course, I'm still, you know, got my little bone broth here, right? <laughs> so sipping on that until the time comes where it's time for quote unquote food. Now, why is that happening? Well, there's something changing um, in my body as a highly sensitive person, part star seed, part uh, earth angel. Um, and um, this seems to decrease any glitches, if you will, with the ascension process. It seems that I can process those higher frequencies faster and easier when I don't spend the time or energy like digesting solid food as much. But that's just me. That may or may not be you, but you know, I'm not even telling you to do that. I'm just noticing that this is a new habit that I like to do. Uh, the other new habit is then I realized, well, gee, you know, my jaw is not getting very much work. <laughs> and then I think to myself, wow, maybe all those aliens with the big brains and the skinny, you know, the, the skinny uh, chins are because they don't chew anything. <laughs> you know, that's where my brain goes. So then I thought, you know, my husband's like, I'd really like the jaws or size. And I thought, you know, that might be kind of cool. So let me, we just got it. So another new habit I decided I was going to do. Um, so it's a little device here and there's several, this is like the, the baby device, meaning it's the easiest one. So you just bite down on it. And um, you exercise your jaw and you're supposed to get a chisel jaw from it. It would be really fun, right? <laughs> Got to take before and after pictures. So I've been, uh, again, I was like, I want to do this new habit, you know? And then I found out about mewing, um, which we're trying to get Dr. Mike Mew, you know, on a call or, you know, with us um, to, to teach us more. But it's about your tongue, the position of your tongue and the underused muscles of your tongue being able to, you know, touch the back of your soft palate, which I'm having great difficulty doing that. My, my husband has no problems, but of course you can tell his jaw is like chiseled, right? So, so um, yeah, like he's, uh, Dr. Mike Mew has been able to change children's like, you know, overbite, underbite with these exercises. Incredible. I just stumbled upon it and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So again, another new habit you know? Um, and then there's like, I'm doing fascia blasting, uh, after exercise. That's another relatively new habit. I, I had it years ago and didn't really do it. And then now it's like, Oh, I exercising more, another habit. Um, and then I'm doing the fascia blasting more and, uh, doing even like on my face and scalp. And so there's all these new habits that I've been inspired to do. So it's like that progressivity, you know, like towards a different shift, a, a different change. Um, towards wellness, right? Now, hopefully um, you haven't had as much going the other way. So <laughs> negative habits. So negative habits might be, you know, drinking too much alcohol or smoking or binge watching Netflix or whatever, you know, eating too many cookies, baked goods, you know, those kind of habits. So hopefully you have uh, other positive habits that you've uh, created or started because it's all like that that change when you are able to switch to new habits um it kind of fires up this um pattern uh subconscious if you will that hey change is okay change is okay change is okay right but you're purposefully doing the change right and so when outer change happens you are more adaptable so let's talk a little bit about flexibility uh sorry um harmony first um, now this has been something that I pretty much ignored <laughs> for a very long time, despite having, you know, learned some Chinese medicine and things like that in the past, but there were cycles to everything. And, you know, the one that we see most like that we acknowledge is seasonal cycles, but there are like, you know, moon cycles and solar cycles and cosmic cycles and ascension cycles, all these different cycles. And, um, you know, for us to, um, really be adaptable to change one thing that's really helpful is really acknowledging that these cycles exist first of all and adapting like for example i mean this is very simple you know a, a example but um how many of you <laughs> have seen you know teenagers walking outside it's freaking cold out okay so it's like 20 degrees and they got like no no scarf no hat Jacket wide open because it's cool, you know. I do that. Uh, some people even have shorts. Uh, I'm exaggerating, but uh, just completely 
what I would say inappropriate to the weather. And then they come into my office or used to come into my office sick. And I'd be like, where's your hat? Where's your scarf? You know, why are you just wearing a windbreaker? It's minus whatever, you know? So it's like, yes, we like our bodies to be resilient to the elements. And my body is much more resilient now than it used to. I mean, I used to like every extreme of temperature, I'd be like, Bleh. couldn't function or hardly function. Like too cold, joints would be too stiff, too damp, joints hurting, you know, or muscles hurting, uh, you know, lots of phlegm, uh, too much wind, headache, migraine, you know, feel like I'm catching cold, too much heat, I'd be melting, you know, that, you know, all these different things. And now I'm much more resilient. But at the same time, we want to meet our bodies where they're at. And so if it's the change in weather is coming, then you adapt to that change in that cycle. And that includes your diet as well. So in places where there is, you know, seasonal change, um, the food available and vegetables and things are going to change as well. So ideally we would change with those cycles of nature as well. We be, we would eat differently based on, um, what time of year it is. It's still something pretty new to me. I haven't gotten into that particular habit, but, you know, just acknowledging these cycles are there are important and, you know, going outside and really receiving the frequencies of nature in the various cycles, I think is also a really great thing. So what about flexibility? Okay. This may be the most important thing right now is, uh, you might've thought flexibility of the body, which is great. But what I'm talking about is the flexibility of your beliefs and your perceptions, because this one thing will transform your experience of life. If you are inflexible, which I was very much inflexible in your beliefs and inflexible in your perceptions, you will be stuck arguing and in resistance of a lot of things. Okay. Whether that be politics, uh, you know, what your mother or father or brother or sister say and what you don't like, what they like, they like, you know, why don't you get a pill? And you're like, I don't take pills and you know, all that kind of stuff, right? I'm not saying that you have to suddenly believe what other people believe. No, no, no. <laughs> have discernment, of course, but let's be open to our beliefs changing and let's be open to our perceptions changing. Okay. I'll give you an example. So, um, or I'm not even, I'm not even saying this is true. It's just a perception. We'll find out hopefully soon enough whether it's true. But for example, um, you know, a person says, well, gee, I don't like, I'm not, you know, I really don't like Donald Trump for this one thing. I like these things about him, but I don't like that he likes, you know, fracking and he's talking about fracking New York and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Right. Uh, and you know, people are, uh, you know, opening their taps and they can put a uh, match to the, and, and all this methane gas, you know, and they can like, ex, you know, fire an explosion, whatever, uh, of, of their water. And that's bad. Fracking is bad. Right. And I was thinking, okay, yeah, well, from what I know, yeah, fracking does seem like not a great idea. <laughs> uh, it may cause, you know, maybe some instability in the earth. Um, does it maybe cause, you know, earthquakes or collapse of structures? Or yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's all that healthy. To, to tap for natural gas that way. I think there's other ways of doing it, right? So then when I see Donald Trump going pro, pro fracking, I'm like, Ooh, I'm not really liking that perspective, right? But then another person might say, well, gee, the reason he's, you know, pro fracking is because they're trying to like, uh, you know, not bomb, what do we say? Like they're trying to expose uh, underground tunnels where they're doing human trafficking and, and, and keeping secrets and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's interesting. Uh, well, if that's true, then, and fracking's a cover up. Okay. I could see how that could potentially be a good thing. Right. So it's just, I'm not even saying that's true. I'm just saying that that's a, that's how like our perceptions can shift and our beliefs can shift based on new information. Right. So if we can be open to new information, um, you could be changing your minds every day who you want to vote for. I'm just talking about politics as an example. Um, but then it's like new information. Okay. Take it for what it is. Make that shift, make that change, new information. Oh, something different. Make that change, make that perceptual shift. If you are stuck in your beliefs too much, which I was before and stuck in your perceptions, I got to tell you, I was not happy then. I was not, I was right. They were wrong. 
and I was not happy. <laughs> so T.R. Becker, one of the wealth teachers says, you can either be right or happy, choose. You, you can't be both. And you'd be like, yes, I can. <laughs> but from my personal experience, it's actually pretty difficult to stick with, oh, I'm always right and some people are wrong. I was never happy in that scenario. So, you know, being open to being wrong, being open to changing my mind, um, that is the way that we can get to a place of human adaptivity. And in this place, just like nature, nature will adapt, 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 adapt. You know, sometimes we do changes faster than nature can adapt for sure. But nature adapts amazingly and humans can sometimes be really stubborn and resist change. But if we can kind of break it down a little bit into all these different areas, especially things that you have control over, like you have control over your beliefs or if you choose to and your perceptions, right? You can kind of double check, how am I perceiving the situation? Because right now I'm really upset, right? And then you can go, okay, how, how can I shift my perception and be open and how would that change my emotions, you know? Um, so there's a lot of people digging in their heels right now. I'm right, you're wrong. And I got to tell you, none of them are the happy people <laughs> that I like to hang out with and, or like to see and hang out with, right? Um, so it's up to you. You get to choose. You get to choose. Um, just know that change will continue to happen. Uh, quicker and quicker and quicker if you uh, resist it and you keep wishing for how it used to be. Okay, we are not in the 50s anymore or 70s or 80s for that matter. Things change quickly. And if you are to survive, and not just survive, but thrive, right? If you are to thrive, then your ability to adjust and adapt and, you know, these kinds of things are is super important and then if you have children then they can you can model that for your children so whatever happens it's like being an expert kayaker you know and you're going down the rapids and there's a boulder here and you just go and you just i don't know what they call them but they, you know, <laughs> they just you know avoid the boulders and they just go smoothly and with the flow and that is the ideal that is the ideal and there's so many different ways that that you can be more adaptable to change and and really healthier for it. So that's this week's Spiritual Medicine Digest. I do have some announcements. Um, number one is that on Monday's radio show on Light Warrior Radio at 12 noon Eastern, uh, I'm going to be airing a uh, an interview with my mentor, Marcus Bird. He has a brand new book out, it's called Just Pivot. And it's about how to create a successful online wellness business from scratch. He actually gives us the blueprint to do that. And guess what? It's only 50 pages, $6 and 80 cents. It's only 50 pages. And there's so many people that are interested in wellness or are already wellness people who have to go online. I mean, otherwise they don't have a job, you know, and um, wouldn't it be great to have a blueprint so you don't make all the mistakes? And here's the blueprint <laughs> and it works because I tried it. It works. It's amazing. So if you are interested in having a wellness business online that thrives, even if you don't like a lot of tech, okay. Cause there's a low tech version and a high tech version. He covers both in the book, get the book, but we have this great conversation. So that's going to air at 12 noon Eastern on Monday. And the other announcement is that um, the Women's Business Maverick Summit that I announced last week actually is delayed three weeks. Sorry, <laughs> things like that happen. Change, right? Adapting to change. So um, still register for that, of course, uh, but it won't start till November 9th. So you have a little bit more time. You can invite some folks. So this is great for women entrepreneurs or uh, would-be women entrepreneurs to really um, you know, have a thriving business without making all the mistakes that many of us have spent tens of thousands of dollars making. <laughs> uh, so that's delayed to November, but that's okay. And the last thing I want to uh, remind you of uh, is that November 4th is the Navigating the Clickety Clack 
book launch party. Woohoo! Woohoo! So we're actually going to have a party. Um, you're going to meet all the authors of the Navigating the Clickety Clack book, including Bob Proctor from the movie Secret and some pretty famous people, Keith Leon, Christy Whitman, uh, maybe Jack Canfield. So super excited about that. Definitely uh, register for the launch party. And what we what the idea is, you come to the launch party, you know, they, they see you are, we do some prizes, you know, gifts, things like that. And then you buy the book then. Why? Because the more people that buy the book in a short window of time, the more Amazon can see that it's like a bestseller, right? That's how the bestseller thing works. I'm learning all this stuff, you know? And, uh, and why would we want to be bestseller? Well, first of all, the book is super important. <laughs> Talk about change. Um, it is called Navigating the Clickety Clack how to stay peace filled in a seemingly toxic world. So this is something that almost everybody could use right now. Advice from, um, you know, the famous people, not so famous people, myself, uh, on all the different ways we can be the calm in the chaos. And uh, this will be a, a really great Christmas or Thanksgiving present if you do that <laughs> as well. So November 4th is the launch date. So definitely register for that party. I definitely want to see you there. Yay. <laughs> and if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, share this video with whoever you think might benefit. All right. Until next time, lots of love. Um, and um, yeah, be well, be safe um, and be the change. Bye for now.